in this study we are going to look at a verse which is the most frequently misunderstood and misinterpreted verse in all the book of revelation and what is that verse revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. now in a few minutes we're going to open up our bibles and look at that verse and i'm going to read it for you i'm going to translate it literally and accurately from the greek new testament and i can be more specific than that from the texas receptus And I want to share with you that many times when we look at a verse of scripture in the original language, that original language can add a great deal to our understanding. But I would say to you in this verse, Revelation 3 and verse 10, the the original really doesn't add all that much to our understanding of the text. In other words, the the translation whether it's english or spanish or for that matter any language by and large does a good job of rendering this verse into the 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 language the language of the translation so that being the case why then is it so frequently misunderstood and misinterpreted well there's a few reasons for that now one is that this verse is used to prove a theological position that is to support a religious doctrine and whenever a verse is used for that purpose we need to be very careful because there's a tendency and we're all guilty of this there's a tendency because i believe that that's my doctrine that's my theological perspective and therefore when i encounter a verse that supports that view that position that doctrine my tendency is just to embrace it because it says what i want it to say but we need to be very careful just because we like what the verse says does not mean that 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 excludes us from thoroughly exegeting the text meaning applying the rules of hermeneutics the rules of exegesis to the text we need to look at that text very carefully applying all the rules for rightly interpreting that that biblical text now there's another reason and that is in chapter 3 and verse 10 the key verse that we're going to be looking at there's a word a greek word and that word appears two times in verse 10. the first time it's a noun the second time it is a verb when it's a noun it appears 21 different places in the greek new testament when it's a verb it appears 39 different times so altogether that that word appears 60 times in the greek new testament in a variety of different books and how is that word translated frequently it's translated with the concept of temptation to tempt someone or if it's a noun temptation and we know something god is never tempted by sin nor does he tempt us but we have to be careful because that same word is also translated as testing god does not tempt us to do sin but god many times will test his people for a a righteous reason that word testing has to do with documenting something proving something manifesting something and let me give you some examples this word is used when yeshua was in the wilderness of judea where satan came to test him or we could say to tempt him and we see something each time those three times that satan tempted yeshua we find that the messiah rejected him he 
conquered that that temptation he he stood faithful in the midst of that testing and therefore it was revealed to us that yeshua is worthy that he is the son of god that he's not like all other humans he is human fully human and fully god but he is not like other humans because we're all from adam that first man and we know that that humanity succumbed to temptation in the garden of eden that's why we're all sinners but messiah he proved himself he manifested himself that he was not a sinner that he could not be successfully tempted and led into sin he documented himself as the faithful son of god and worthy to be the messiah secondly we see that word is used when religious leaders would come before him to test him with a question or a situation and again what happened always he overcame that testing and he proved himself to be faithful wise to be the son of god so this word first and foremost involves a testing yes sometimes it can be in the sense of temptation but in a base meaning it simply means to test for the purpose of revealing for the person purpose of documenting something for the purpose of manifesting biblical truth now there's another reason that people fail to rightly understand and interpret revelation 3 verse 10 at the end of that verse there is a a statement it has to do with those who dwell upon the earth and we need to realize that in the book of revelation and the only way that someone's going to know this is either being taught that by by a scholar or by studying thoroughly the book of revelation not just one time reading it but reading it over and over and over because as you do you'll find that there are two phrases that appear frequently and what are these two phrases the ones who dwell upon the earth and the ones who dwell in heaven now i've mentioned this to you before these two phrases speak about humanity all of humanity is going to fall into one of these two groups either those who dwell upon the earth or those who dwell in the heaven and be careful because when these two phrases appear in the book of revelation it has nothing to do with where they are physically located it has to do with their identity who they belong to and we're going to see undeniably and here again you don't have to accept that now we are going to do a brief study of these phrases and at the end of it i think you will be convinced of what i'm sharing with you is in fact true and that is those who dwell upon the earth speak to those who have no relationship with messiah write that down remember that those who dwell upon the earth have nothing to do with messiah they have to do with the antichrist empire they are not faithful they are not believers and in the end they are going to be recipients of the wrath of god now here's what this verse is usually taught from this verse look with me now to revelation chapter 3 and verse 10 where it says because you have kept my word of perseverance or endurance now the word that i want to emphasize is a word hupo monis and it's a word of enduring it's a word of persevering it's a word that speaks of being faithful over an extended period of time and oftentimes suffering for that faithfulness persevering in the midst of opposition 
and what does messiah say look again verse 10 because you have kept my word of perseverance also i will keep you from the hour of testing some will say the hour of trial or the aisle of temptation however you translate it that's not important at the moment but we see that there's an hour of testing and he says the one that is coming literally the one that is brought when we look at that word it's not the word coming but it literally says the one that is about to be brought it's in the passive very significant who's going to bring that that time of of testing that's the question that we have to answer and it says that is about to be brought upon the entire world for what purpose to test and remember this is a word of revealing manifesting something documenting something it says to test the ones who dwell upon the earth now i would highlight underline remember how that verse ends there's coming a time of testing that that testing is going to reveal something it's going to reveal something about those who dwell upon the earth and remember i have suggested to you we'll see if this is true if you agree with me but i have suggested to you that phrase those who dwell upon the earth speaks of those who have no relationship with messiah their name is not written in the lamb's book of life they belong to this world and they are under the influence of the antichrist and they are going to be dealt with eventually by god because of this commitment to the antichrist purpose not the purposes of the messiah but the purposes of the antichrist that is who they are loyal to who they belong to and again you say well i don't know if i can agree with you at this time i would say that you're right you shouldn't agree with me now but let's look at that phrase and see what is said about that phrase and the other those who dwell upon heaven let's see what the book of revelation says about these two groups and after looking at the scriptural content from the book of revelation then we might have an agreement you might be persuaded by not me but by the word of god itself what these two groups those who dwell upon the earth and those who dwell in heaven really are speaking to so let's do that at this time look with me now to another part of the book of revelation revelation chapter 6 look with me to verse 10. revelation chapter 6 beginning with verse 10. now be aware that in this section of chapter 6 we're in the fifth seal and what's happening in that fifth seal there is persecution there is suffering there is martyrdom for those who are faithful to messiah those who have a testimony concerning the word of god so that's very significant and here's a question i want us to consider who is persecuting them who is the one that is against those who have the testimony of messiah who are faithful to the word of god and all we have to do is to look at verse 10 for that answer so let's do that verse 10. revelation 6 verse 10 where it says and they cried out in a great voice saying until when o lord so there's a group speaking and they're crying out specifically to the lord and they're asking the question until when O lord and the lord that we're speaking about notice he's the holy one and the true one now your bible may not have the phrase the holy one and the true one but when we look at the original language that is understood that is the intent of the definite article that is the word the before the word holy 
and the word true so it's the holy one and the true one and he wants to ask a question these people until when or how long until you judge and avenge our blood well we don't have to speculate who's speaking it is those that are being put to death those who are being persecuted for the testimony of the word of god because they belong to messiah these disciples are suffering they're being persecuted by who well notice it says here how long O lord the holy one and the true one until you judge and avenge our blood from and this is what's so important from the ones who are dwelling upon the earth so we see something there are those who are believers and they are suffering they are being persecuted they are being put to death by who those who belong to the antichrist and how are they spoken of here those who dwell upon the earth remember that phrase those who dwell upon the earth we saw it in revelation 3 10 now we saw it in revelation 6 10 and let's move on to another location look with me to revelation chapter 8 and verse 13 the last verse of this eighth chapter now remember something in revelation chapter 8 this is where the wrath of god begins not before it this has some very significant implications people will say but wait in revelation chapter 6 in the sixth seal the wrath of the lamb referring to the wrath of god is proclaimed that's true but in revelation chapter 7 one of the angels says stop do not harm the earth or the trees or the sea until we seal the servants of god and that is that sealing of the hundred and forty four thousand from the tribes of israel and then also we see another event i'm going to leave that for now but but these two events precede the wrath of god but now in revelation chapter 8 beginning with these trumpet judgments there is the wrath of god beginning and notice what is said in this last verse verse 13 of revelation 8 we read and i looked and i heard one angel now i shared with you that i'm reading from the texas receptus if you're reading from a translation that comes from a different greek new testament known as nestle allen it will have something very different it will have one eagle but i would strongly suggest to you that in the book of revelation we find that angels are being used not an eagle this is an alternate reading and unfortunately most of the modern translations they don't use the texas receptus they use nestle allen and so your bibles more than likely will say one eagle but the best greek manuscripts they have one angel that is better than one eagle again i looked and i saw one angel flying in the midst of heaven saying in a great voice notice what he says whoa 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 now this word can also be translated alas and alas means something terrible is about to happen that word woe proclaims something that's not good and what is that the judgment of god and why do i say that well just look at the context it says woe 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 to who to the ones who dwell upon the earth from the remaining sounds of the shofar that is the trumpet that ram's horn 
and it's the trumpet of the three angels which are about to sound meaning sound their trumpet now these trumpets represent the wrath of god just read revelation chapters 8 and 9 this is where we find the trumpet judgments and they're related to the wrath of god not the activity of of satan or the antichrist but the wrath of god so now we see something when we read this properly this woe 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 that relates to the coming of god's wrath is upon who the ones who dwell upon the earth and that is most significant see what happens usually is this when we go back to revelation chapter 3 most people want to say that hour of of testing that's coming upon the whole world upon those who dwell upon the earth they want to understand that as having to do with the antichrist activity and this this being saved from that hour of testing well they want to say that it has to do with the rapture now i agree with that aspect it does relate to the rapture but we're not talking about being saved from the antichrist but being saved from as we see here these woes these things that represent the judgment the wrath of god this is what the ones who dwell upon the earth are going to receive but here again let's press on and look at another passage of scripture that deals with the ones who dwell upon the earth now i want you to look at revelation chapter 11 and verse 10. now we have to be very careful because at the beginning of revelation chapter 11 we're talking about the fact that the antichrist will will have almost and i want to underscore that almost free reign to do what he wants during the first 42 months the first three and a half years of daniel's 70th week now when we read on in this 11th chapter we move out of the first three and a half years and we move into a time when the antichrist still is functioning and what is he doing well we find that he hates these two witnesses now most of you know that there are these two witnesses two prophets as we'll see that speak in the last days i would suggest after the first three and a half years in the second half of daniel's 70th week but we won't go into that in any great detail now what i want you to see is what happens by the ones who dwell upon the earth look at verse 10 revelation 11 and verse 10 where it says and the ones dwelling upon the earth they will rejoice over them who's the them well we're going to see it has to do with these two witnesses whom god sent who spoke truth they were put to death now they finished their testimony but they died for their obedience to the will of god i think that's very significant i believe that is a message to the church in the last days that we might be put to death and these two prophets these two witnesses were were put to death by who well let's look carefully verse 10 and the ones who dwell upon the earth they will rejoice over them and they will make merry and they will send gifts to one another because these two prophets these are the two that were sent by god to testify they did something they tormented the ones who dwelt upon the word of uh, dwelt upon the earth so these two prophets in their testimony they're bearing witness they're prophesying 
they tormented who? The ones who dwell upon the earth. Now, obviously, those who dwell in heaven, and again, we're not talking about where they are located necessarily, but those who have a relationship with Messiah, they're not going to be tormented by God's prophetic truth through these two witnesses. Now, I will say, in my opinion, when these two witnesses are functioning, it is indeed when the church believers are indeed dwelling in heaven but the point here is this believers are going to love god's prophetic word they're going to agree they're going to say amen to what these two witnesses have it's the ones who dwell upon the earth who are in in covenant with the antichrist they are going to be tormented by these prophetic words now let's go to another passage look with me to the next chapter chapter 12 and verse 12 again revelation chapter 12 and verse 12. what does it say here on account of this the heavens will rejoice and the ones who dwell in them now notice this the ones who dwell in the heavens they're going to be rejoicing why because of the woe that is to the ones who dwell upon the earth and the sea why because satan has come down to you the one having this one having great great wrath or anger knowing that his time is that he has is few so what's going to happen those who are dwelling in the heavens we are going to be rejoicing why because satan is going to come down and what is he going to do well we see here that he is going to to torment he is going to have woe for who the ones who dwell upon the earth why now some will say this seems like a a problematic thing because they are in obedience to the antichrist the antichrist is satan incarnate but what do we see here we see that satan is coming down he is angry and we are rejoicing in the fact that he's angry and what is he going to do ultimately satan wants suffering satan wants those whomsoever to suffer to to be in pain to experience adversity that's what we see is the nature of satan and therefore when satan is carrying out his foolish schemes what's going to happen what well, says here those who dwell in the heaven they are going to rejoice but there will be woe for those who dwell upon the earth and the sea because the devil he's coming down to you having great anger knowing that little time he has let's move to another very important chapter and this is chapter 13 look with me to verse 6 revelation chapter 13 beginning in verse 6 where it says and he opened his mouth to blaspheme god and to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and who else and the ones who are dwelling in heaven so we see here that this this antichrist empire and that's the subject of the first part of revelation 13 that antichrist empire which is a blasphemous empire what is this empire doing opening its mouth to blaspheme god to blaspheme his name to blaspheme his temple or his tabernacle and the ones who are dwelling in heaven and it says here it was given to him this antichrist empire 
to make war with who the saints and to overcome them and it was given to him authority over every tribe and every language and every nation that that they should worship him who all the ones dwelling upon the earth they are going to worship and pledge allegiance to this antichrist empire and who are these who dwell upon the earth it tells us whom the name their names had not been written in the book of life of the lamb that was sealed at the foundations or from the foundations of the world so we see here that those who dwell upon the earth their names are not written in the lamb's book of life and they are going to be be ruled over by the antichrist look at verse verse 9 to him who has an ear let him hear now that's a message to the church we need to be aware of what this speaks to about how the antichrist empire is going to make war with those whose names are written in heaven those who dwell in heaven but the antichrist empire is going to make war with the saints and overcome us and it's going to be given to this antichrist empire authority over every tribe every language every nation that all the ones dwelling upon the earth are going to be worshiping him and who are those who dwell upon the earth again the ones whose names have not been written in the lamb's book of life now let's move on to another another verse look with me to chapter 13 again and verse 12 where it says these words revelation 13 and verse 12 it says and all authority of the first beast he did before him now we're talking about the antichrist not his empire any longer but the antichrist himself the one that comes out of the land solid land and that means a time of stability there's going to be great instability in the world and that instability is going to bring about the antichrist empire but after that antichrist empire stabilizes things then the antichrist will be manifested and who is this one well he's the one this antichrist is going to give all authority to the first beast to that empire and he's going to function before him meaning before that empire and he is going to do something he is going to it says here he is going to do in this land also in regard to the ones who dwell in it in order that they should worship this first beast that antichrist empire the one who had a deadly wound that was healed and it says that this one is going to make great signs and even order to make fire come down from the heaven upon the earth before men before humanity and it says all of this is going to deceive deceive who the ones who dwell upon the earth so we see here that the antichrist is going to give credence and power and authority and cause those who dwell upon the earth not believers not those who have a heavenly connection but those who dwell upon the earth to to be amazed by these signs and these signs false signs counterfeit miracles they are going to lead those who dwell upon the earth to worship to pay allegiance to that antichrist empire now let's look to chapter 14 and verse 6 revelation chapter 14 and verse 6 notice what it says here and i saw another angel 
flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to proclaim and this is going to happen right before the rapture what is going to happen we see this for example in matthew chapter 24 and verse 14. there it says that there's a necessity that that before the end that this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout all the world to as a testimony to all the nations then the end will come and who is the one that's going to be proclaiming that not the hundred and forty four thousand that's a false teaching nowhere in the scripture does it call the hundred and forty four thousand evangelists that is something that theologians teach but the bible does not we find that the gospel is going to be proclaimed as it says here look again revelation 14 and verse 6 it says here i saw another angel flying in the midst of the heavens having the everlasting or eternal gospel to evangelize the ones who dwell upon the earth from every nation every tribe every language and every people this is a proclamation that happens prior to the rapture prior to the wrath of god why god is gracious he wants all people to be saved therefore all the people in that last days before the wrath of god begins they will hear the gospel supernaturally proclaimed to them but notice it's being proclaimed to the ones who dwell upon the earth those who have not yet received the gospel those up until that time have rejected it those who are loyal to the antichrist this is their last opportunity before god's wrath begins let's look at a last chapter that we're going to look at look with me to revelation chapter 7 there's two verses here revelation chapter 7 look with me to verse 2. revelation chapter 17 let me get that right revelation chapter 17 and verse 2 where it says whom has committed fornication this is spiritual fornication this is idolatry who has committed and who has committed this fornication the kings of the earth and they have become drunk from the wine of her meaning this empire this evil empire's fornication now who has become drunk the ones who dwell upon the earth so again we see over and over the ones who dwell upon the earth they have participated with the antichrist and his empire believing this this fornication this idolatry this false teaching this which is not acceptable by god and then look at our last verse look if you would to verse 8 of this same 17th chapter where it says the beast which you saw was and is not and is about to come up out of the abyss and will go away into destruction now notice that this beast this empire that was was not it's about to re-emerge out of the abyss this is this antichrist empire it was in the past it is and then there was no more and then it will be again it will come up from the abyss but it will go away into destruction but notice what it says the ones who dwell upon the earth they will marvel now if you do a good study of this word for marveling or being amazed it has a degree of adoration they will see that they'll be amazed they're marvel but they'll also be in admiring this this evil empire and who are the ones who are dwelling upon the earth well it tells us who their names 
had not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world these are the ones who will see the beast that was and is not and is about to be what does it say here it shows how that beast is connected to satan how it's connected to the mark of the beast how it is connected to this evil empire the antichrist empire in the last days so i hope that we can see very clearly the ones who dwell upon the earth are non-believers they are going to be recipients of god's wrath they are going to be also ones that are confused and will be punished even by satan and the terrible things that he is going to bring into this world so it has nothing to do with the people of god now why is that important well let's conclude go with me one last time to the book of revelation then we'll be done revelation chapter 3 and verse 10 this key verse where it says because you he's speaking to the faithful church the church in philadelphia and it's for all faithful believers in the last days he says because you've kept my word of perseverance again that is a message for the church in the last days that we have to persevere we have to endure we're also called to to watch and that word watch means watch out for that enemy take heed be aware be awake and that has to do with watching for these prophetic signs that will happen in the last days look again because you have kept my word of endurance also i will keep you from the hour of testing that is about to be brought upon the whole world to test who this hour of testing is not for believers it is for those who belong to the antichrist and as we see this hour of testing is going to manifest remember that word for testing it manifests something it reveals something it documents it proves something that the ones who belong to the earth they don't belong to the kingdom they don't dwell in the kingdom they're not heavenly connected they're earthly connected and what are they going to experience they're going to experience the wrath of god these woe 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 that god is going to bring upon them this is what we need to understand now does this promise that we are going to be spared from something yes revelation 3 10 promises us that we are going to be spared from this punishment that god is going to bring onto this world upon those who reject his messiah so we as those who dwell in the heaven we are not going to experience the wrath of god we're not going to experience those woes woes and woes what's going to happen we are going to be removed from this world prior to the wrath of god that's why it is wrong to interpret revelation chapter 3 and verse 10 as relating to the antichrist activity that we through the rapture are going to be spared from the antichrist this is not a position that biblically can be supported and everyone who who uses this to prove their doctrine that we will be spared from the antichrist will never see the antichrist does not recognize the implications to the ones who dwell upon the earth we are spared from the punishment that those who belong on the earth receive it has nothing to do with the antichrist time or being sheltered or preserved or removed before the antichrist activity that is the truth concerning revelation chapter 3 and verse 10 until next time 
Shalom from Israel. Thank you.